Hey everyone, this is David here from Sheets Finance and welcome back to our Getting Started series. In this next part, we're going to look at generating historical distribution or dividend data. This is of course all within Google Sheets using the Sheets Finance extension. So let's jump right into it. To get dividend data, we're going to be using the function sfdividend and I'll type it into cell A1. The most simple example is just entering the stock code, for instance, Apple, closing bracket, and not entering any more arguments into the function and clicking enter. This will generate all the dividend data for that particular financial asset that we have available on Sheets Finance. And you'll see that for Apple, this data goes all the way back to 1987. Taking it that step further, let's explore the function a little bit more. As always, the functions come with instructions and you can click the drop down to read about which arguments are which and what's expected for each argument. Um, the next, uh, the second argument of the function is the start date of our distribution data output. So for instance, let's put in 2020, uh, the 1st of January, 2020. And then as our output, we'll put in today's date <clears throat> which is the 6th of December, 2023. And we'll click enter. And just like that, we are returned uh, only the last three years of data. And that includes the dividend, adjusted dividend, record date, payment date, and declaration date. Now, uh, working with the fourth argument of the function is the metrics argument. And like all our functions, you can chain together the metrics that you would like to display. So for example, if we don't want every single column um, displayed, we could put in, for instance, just date and using the and operator, we can select uh, which columns we'd like to output. So for instance, date and dividend. And there you have it. It's a more simplified output. There is one more argument, and that is the fifth argument of the SF dividend function, and that is for options. In this case, there are two options. We can remove the header row by including NH. And I'll show you what that looks like. Reloading that, we now have no uh, titles and no header rows. And then our second option, and we can chain them together, is the uh, subtraction or negative sign to reverse the order of the output. So let's just say we want to go in ascending order rather than descending order, we could include that in our options argument. And if I click that, you'll then see that the distributions begin in 2020 and uh, finish in 2023. Um, and that's about it. That's how the function works. I'll go on to uh, work with it by referencing cells rather than directly typing into it. And then I'll show you how to generate it using the function generator. But if you get the gist already, then off you go. Go and enjoy the function. So uh, the next example I will show you is if we want to reference cells instead. So now we've got Apple, then we might have a start date. And let's call this one uh, maybe a year ago. So today minus 365 days. We might have an end date. Again, I'm going to make this one today. If I set it to today, then it means that every time I open this sheet, my data will update based on or with reference to today's date. So I find that quite useful. Um, those are the three pieces of information that I need. I'll bold these because they're headings. And now, of course, it's even simpler to create the function. I can just reference the cells that I'm after. Close bracket, click enter, and we'll get all the distribution data for the last year. Now, of course, because we're referencing cell B2 for the stock, cell B, uh, B1 for the stock, sorry, B2 for the start date and B3 for the end date, we can dynamically adjust these. So let's just say we want, for instance, uh, Visa's dividends over this time. We can just change that stock code to Visa. Uh, for instance, we have Microsoft um, and so on and so forth. Of course, we can also adjust the end date. Let's just say we now make the end date minus, I don't know, a thousand days. Or, of course, it doesn't need to be relative to today. We could just put in any date whatsoever. So 20, I don't know, 1999, 01, 01. And there you go. So the one last example I'll show you is using the function generator. It does exactly the same thing, except you just don't need to actually enter any of the data yourself. Uh, or sorry, write the functions yourself. You can just uh, select it from the function generator. So we open this from the drop down menu under the extensions 
uh, subheader and then we open the function generator. And it'll open here on the right hand side. And one of the options you'll see here is dividends. Again, I can enter the stock that I'm after, for instance, Apple. I can select a combination of metrics that I want, for instance, these three. And then I've got these lovely drop down calendars where I can select the date that I'm after for the start date and I can have the end date and I could pot potentially, you know, uh, include options if I want those as well. And then I just click generate and by clicking generate, it'll input this function that's been built into our currently highlighted cell, which is A1. Unless I was, for instance, to write in a specific cell in the insert um, input over here, then it'll insert that function into whichever cell I've specified. But in this case, I'm leaving that blank and I'm just choosing to insert it over here into cell A1. So I'll click generate. And that's it. There's the data. Those are the selected metrics. And that's the time frame that we chose in the function generator. Um, we have distribution data for tens of thousands of financial assets globally. So jump right in, uh, leave me a comment below if you have any questions. And of course, all of this is documented on our website at sheetsfinance.com. Cheers, guys. See you next time.